I'm Annie D and I farm in West Alabama and East Mississippi. I farm with my brother Mike, had the cowboy hat on a while ago, he took it off, and my twin sons. I have Seth here with me today and I have a couple of my employees, Zach and Frazier, and uh, we have a pretty good team over there. My farm's a family farm. It's owned by my 11 brothers and sisters and myself. So that usually gets like, a, oh. But the only two people on the farm now that own it are my youngest brother and myself. So you can guess like another whole conversation could be like, what's your succession plan? But we don't have that yet. We'll work on it. Um, our roots go back to 1953, which is even before I was born. My dad and his dad and uncle bought some property in Florida and something that uh, Wes talked about it a minute ago was, you know, water shortages and all that. And uh, we moved to Alabama. We started farming that farm in, I guess, the late 80s. And then Southwest Florida Water Management District discovered that that's where they must have looked on one of those big uh, maps like he was showing us. And they decided they needed that water holding capacity that that 10,000 acres that we had down there held. And it's just above Tampa and St. Petersburg. So they came and they said, you know, we're going to get your farm. So my dad was a real smart man. And he said, OK, let's negotiate. So anyway, that brought us to Alabama 25 years ago. We weren't raised on the farm. So everything that we know, we have learned along the way. So it's maybe sometimes to our advantage because we don't have we don't know what dad did. We don't know what granddaddy did because we've had to learn it. And we've had a lot of good help with extension here in Alabama, and we really appreciate it. We have 10,000 acres. We farm corn, soybeans, wheat, heavy emphasis on cover crops and no-till, and that's really helped us to be, be better farmers and build our soil. We're certified USDA beef producers. We have Brahma and Angus type cattle, Brangus. We're a family farm, but we also consider ourselves a business, so we have to try to make a profit. We're looking at the next generation and future generations. We want to protect the environment as well as our financial perspective. It's important for us to have energy efficiency and water efficiency, and Wes talked about that, and we've heard some other people talking about that today. So when we designed our system, that was at the forefront of, of our system. And we first put in two pivots to see would it work, was it going to work where we are. We're farming, we're only row cropping about 4,000 acres, but we put in about 300 acres worth of pivots to see would it pay for itself. We had asked some irrigation specialists maybe 20 years ago at Auburn to come and look at it, and they said, you know, what kind of crops are you raising now, and what do you think you'll be able to raise? And we had some real good yields in that time, and it was raining a lot and kind of at the right time. And they said, you know, you'd be better off if you just kept doing what you're doing because it's not going to pay for itself. Well, as corn got worth a little more and beans got worth a lot more, then we kind of re revisited it. So the first two pivots that we put in, we made, well, we're in some sandier type soil. The corn made a hundred bushel difference where we had irrigation and where we didn't. And let me say, you know, it was when we had seven fifty eight dollar corn. So that system, even building the 25-acre reservoir, paid for over half of itself in that first year. So, you know, like, I didn't get my PhD, but it didn't take me very long to think, ah, I better get with it and hurry up and irrigate everything we can. So um, the two systems that we put in were independent of each other. One, we hooked to a cow pond, and one, we built a reservoir. So. We kind of looked at irrigating as much acreage as we could and trying to make a big plan where we didn't just go over here and make a pivot and over there and make a pivot and drill a well, drill a well. So it took us about a year to make a whole good plan that we felt like we could live with. I don't have to tell you about the seasonal rainfall because most of you live in Alabama and you know you get most of the rain in the wintertime, at least we do over in West Alabama, we get most of the rain in the wintertime. And then in the summertime when we need it the most, it's already gone down the creek and down the Tom Bigby and down the Gulf of Mexico. So we decided we were going to have to manage our risks. If we could capture that water and we could put it out when we needed it, we could really, we could take out some of the risk that we have. 
my friend Stanley Walters didn't come today, but we were at an irrigation meeting a couple years ago, and I think we had the $7 corn, and he said, that's all well and good if you put in that high-priced stuff, but he said, if corn goes to 3 or $4, you're not going to be able to afford to irrigate. And I said, if you don't put in irrigation, I did some numbers real quick on my calculator, and I said, if you don't put in some irrigation and you have some dry periods, you're going to be out of business in one or two years if you have 3 or $4 corn. I guess we never think it's really going to happen to us, but it did. So we found a group to help us kind of like sit down and figure out what decisions did we want to make. Uh, one of the big people influential to Mike and I on deciding all this was Dennis Bragg, and he's going to talk in a few minutes. And so uh, we went, Seth loaded up with us. We went up to North Alabama, and we saw what Dennis was doing. And Now, Dennis has a degree from Auburn University in engineering. And I said a few minutes ago to Dennis, I said, now, how long did it take you to draw your plans up? And he said, well, I started drawing them in college. So he was sitting in his classroom and he was drawing on his maps. He was drawing his irrigation pivots. Well, I didn't start drawing them in college and I'm really not that good at drawing circles. And I, Mike probably is better. He could draw the reservoir in there, but Anyway, we decided we needed to hurry up and get some expert advice and we, we needed somebody to help us get it right because we were going to have such a big investment. If we didn't get it right the first time, we were going to be all the way out of business. So first of all, we don't have very much labor. So we decided we needed to have it as automated as possible. Now, Dennis is real smart, and he's engineered his, remember he's an engineer, he's engineered his where he turns on this valve and opens it a little bit, and he does something else, and he gets on the radio to the other guy, and he says, do this, do that, and it all works as long as Dennis and his number one man are there. But I said, look, no one of us, Mike or I or Seth, want to be at the farm nonstop where we all have to go and turn this and turn that. So uh, we work to automate our system where our system, the pumps and the pivots can all be turned on by the phone or the computer or wherever we are. So um, by automating it, it cost us uh, considerably more up front, but I think it saved us more in just the ability to be able to accomplish when we need to. Where we live on the Alabama-Mississippi state line, we don't have good cell phone coverage. Anybody else have that in Alabama? Well. So without good cell phone coverage, we wouldn't be able to turn it on with our computers and our systems. So we had to actually put in a Wi-Fi tower at our own expense for, uh, we have a 25 mile radius that that Wi-Fi will carry now. So we had to do that, but we weren't gonna be able to automate that without that. We tried a couple different things, tried going to AT&T and said, you know, y'all help us boost across the state line, but that didn't happen. So we needed it to be efficient. We needed it to be um, energy efficient as well as water efficient. I told you we needed a whole system approach. We didn't want to just go here and there and figure out later we should have done this or that. And we were looking for a partner and experts that knew this stuff and that were going to be there to help us all along the way when we got finished and then in the future to help us grow. And it was going to have to, they had to show us a good financial return right from the start. So they came back to us with this. They got that little map like Wes was showing us a minute ago, and they drew a bunch of circles, a little half circles. But we ended up with this one, and it's a pretty good system. Let's see if I can see how to do this. This right here is our biggest one. I'm not that happy with that one because you see this little line through here? Well, that's a big ditch. I'm not sure that we wouldn't have been better off putting in four smaller systems. That's more efficient what we have there, but it stayed stuck a lot this year. You know, if it stayed stuck, if we took that phone and we clicked it on and it went out there and it got stuck and it didn't go and we didn't get it out for a couple of days or something else happened, something else happened. So this winter we just um, went through that ditch and straightened it out and leveled it out a bit and shallowed it up a bit. And you can, we, now we put in some heavy use areas. If any of you have used any heavy use areas within RCS, you put that fabric down, you put rock down and see will it go through there. So you can ask me next year, am I happy with that big pivot? I mean, certainly it's more efficient if you get one big pivot and you can make it do what you want. But if you can't, I mean, it's like just sitting there, it's just kind of in the way. Uh, 
This is where our reservoir is. Some of it's back in some trees. That's about a 110 acre reservoir. That's the one Mike drew up in college. So he and Dennis were the same kind of folks. They were drawing some stuff up in college that later they got to see come true. So we had the 110 acre reservoir. We put in uh, five Watertronics pumps. This is our pump station right here. This big pipe's coming out of the reservoir and then it goes out this way and goes in different directions. Um, we talked about one big pump, certainly it would be cheaper up front, but what these pumps are, like I brought my chauffeur, otherwise known as my brother Mike, if, I, if you ask me any hard questions, I'll refer to my chauffeur over there, but um, they're variable rate pumps and they'll come on one at a time as the demand needs up to uh, five pumps. So if we per turn on one or two pivots, maybe only one pump goes and it ramps up to the variable rate to how much pressure it needs and goes on. And it keeps track of the hours on each pump and it rotates them so when we need to rebuild them, we rebuild them all at the same time. So it took a whole bunch of thinking and talking and figuring out that really we could put in five pumps that cost a little more up front. We toured the factory. They tried to show us, you know, like what was going on there. And they had a little wet pit there. And they said, you know, we'll test them for you before you come. And when we first got started with this big project, we just put in uh, five pivots that we could put in real fast because we finished, fin finished digging that reservoir in March. So we really were going to miss most of the rain we needed that year to irrigate. So we really only needed two pumps or maybe three. So we talked about if we wanted to go ahead with the financial expense of buying all five pumps at once or just paying for what we needed up front. And somehow, I'm the one that has to watch the checkbook, but somehow they convinced me to go ahead and just get those five pumps. You'll have them. You'll, you'll have them. You'll be ready when you're ready. So we did, and when we got them on, they brought them and unloaded them. And it's one of those turnkey systems that it really worked like they said it would. You know, they brought all that stuff they installed it, they hooked it up, we turned it on, we did a few things and just a little bit of time and a little bit of irrigating they could see that it was drawn too many amps. Was that the right word, Mark? Amps? They found that before they shipped it. Oh, they found it before they shipped it. So it was still at the factory. So um, anyway, I think they had to take them apart and trim on them. They had to get a hold of the manufacturer and trim on the impellers and, and adjust it. So they were able to test them on their uh, wet pit before they sent them to us. So we were glad. Otherwise, they wouldn't have known that five of them were going to pull too many amps and cause us too many trouble. So that, that worked out really well for us. Um, after we put in the second year that we, the year we finished the reservoir, we put in five pivots real fast that we didn't have to do any ditching or clearing any trees. But after that, we had the major part of our infrastructure in place and we already had had to pay for it. So we decided to hurry up and get the rest of our pivots in and uh, pipe and stuff that we needed in. So this following year we put in 16 pivots, so now we're up to 18, 19 pivots. I told you about the Wi-Fi tower, the broadband Wi-Fi tower, and we control all of our work with the field net, and we have great support and knowledge from our local Lindsay dealer, Black Prairie Tractor. And I'll just say, the great thing about them is no matter what happens, we call them and they come and it's their problem, whether it's we don't have good connectivity because I can't turn it on right here with my phone or something's wrong with the pivot or something's wrong with the pump or something else. So if you use somebody and you put in a big system and they're responsible for all of it, they don't say, no, that's somebody else's, that's the pump people, or no, that's the installation people, or no, that's the this people. So that has really been a great help to us to just have a one stop. The lessons we've learned are the timeliness and reliability of water application have improved our yield. I'm gonna say even with the, I haven't gotten to work on the figures that we've come up with this year for irrigated and non-irrigated, um, but I'm going to say within five years, we'll, we will have paid the return over irrigation compared to not irrigating. We'll have paid for all this whole system, the reservoir, the pump station, all the pivots, all the pipe, everything else that we've had. It's really it makes a difference in that short amount of window the last couple of years that we've even needed to add the water, but it's really made a difference. Having the reservoir, we control the water ourselves. We have a five to one um, watershed there, five inches of rain will 
one inch of rain will give us five inches of runoff into there, and that's made a difference. We talked about irrigating out of the Tom Bigby River. We're a couple miles from the river, but the pumping costs would have been, would have probably taken about two years to pay for that reservoir. Uh, there's a creek that feeds into the river. We talked about pumping out of there. Um, and we weren't sure that we always had water there. And either the creek or the river were going to give us a real hard time being able to hold our pumps in place with the amount of water that we get when we get a big rain event or the trees or just being able to protect us. So I was the last holder outer on building that reservoir just because of the financial cost, but I was wrong about that. That's really, that's been just a great asset on our farm. And now we control the water. Nobody's telling us at some later date that don't, you can't pump that because that's coming out of the groundwater. Our future plans are to leverage the Lindsay Advantage in our operation. Um, they help us uh, keep up with the latest technologies. Uh, we're going to improve our efficiency and our irrigation knowledge. And like Wes said, he's been over to the farm. Paul Mass said, we're going to get a guy. He said, we're going to get a person to help us with irrigation in Alabama and in Georgia. And he said, the test will be if he'll go over to Annie's farm. <laughs> because it's 200 miles from here and he's another 100 or two miles. So he's been over there. He's going to help us become more efficient and uh, help us with some scheduling. We don't have that down perfect yet. Um, what we know it's going to do is help us preserve the farm for now and for our future generations. With that, I'm going to let my partner, Dennis Bragg, come up here and share with you some of where he thinks irrigation is going in the future. <laughs> 